So here we have a model of the whole skull to show the relationship between the skull and the brain. So we can see the various bones of the skull. And conveniently, the top of this skull has been cut off for us. So we can take out the lid of the skull, revealing the lid of the skull here with its some blood vessels. These are actually the blood vessels of the meningeal arteries. And we see here the way the brain is nicely packaged inside the skull. We can see the frontal areas, parietal areas, at the back we have the occipital areas, on this side it's in green, the occipital area. In this model, in red we have the motor areas and in blue we have the sensory areas. And again we can clearly see the right cerebral hemisphere and the left cerebral hemisphere. And of course we can take this brain out. leaving as the floor of the skull, the base of the skull. And in this model, in red, we have the arterial system taking blood to the brain. In yellow, we have the nerves taking messages to and from the brain. And here, in yellow, we have the top of the spinal cord going through the hole in the base of the skull called the foramen magnum. And we can see here there's actually a circle of arteries at the base of the brain. This is called the circle of Willis and it provides a degree of collateral circulation to the brain. So blood approaches via this bacillary artery here and via the carotid arteries. We actually can't see those here, they're going down into the plane of the skull. But then blood goes off to the brain via various arteries. For example, this one here is the middle cerebral artery. You might have come across that because this one's commonly blocked off, causing strokes. And if we go around and look at the back of this model, we can see the vertebrae. These are the cervical vertebrae. C1, 2, three, four, five, six, and seven. These are the cervical nerves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So interesting to note that there are seven cervical vertebrae, but eight cervical nerves. That's because the first cervical nerve is on top. It's on top of the first cervical vertebrae. And we see the spinal cord going down through the vertebrae, protected by the vertebrae. But of course this model also shows why it's so important to look after the cervical spine if a patient's been traumatized because the spinal cord is going through the vertebrae and if the spinal cord were to be transected at one of these levels the patient would be completely paralysed 
below the level of the injury. And indeed, with high cervical fractures, the patient would be unable to breathe. Looking at the side of this model, we see the carotid artery taking blood towards the brain. This is the internal carotid artery here taking blood up to the circle of Willis. So that just gives us some insight into the complexity of the relationship between the brain and the skull, the blood vessels and the nerves taking information to and from the brain.